Welcome back, everybody, to DreamHack Winter 2015. It's time for the round of 16 to find out who is going to go into the playoffs of the round of eight and start getting their points for the Hearthstone's World Championship in 2016. That's right. DreamHack Winter is going to be contributing towards next year's prize pool and runnings. And we're going to kick it off with Lothar and Ecop. How are you doing, Ecop? How's your tournament been? Oh, I mean, this has been an amazing tournament. Unfortunately, I c came just a little bit short uh, to getting into the top 16. But it was a really fun tournament. Obviously, as everyone already mentioned, probably it's uh, a throwback to the old card game tournaments that I used to play before Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to have this tournament format, and I hope to see a lot of more of this in the future. Sure, I mean it's it's definitely painful, right? I mean you went down to the very wire, being able to potentially advance in the last day. But um, at the same time, I think it's like really awesome some of the stories that that come up from it. We were talking about it in the, on the casting desk uh, prior to this series that no one who gets here gets here by mistake, right? It's just yeah. a lot of players, they had to have like 80% plus win rate to get to where they are, and that's fantastic considering, you know, the, the level of competition here at DreamHack is nothing to scoff at. Yeah, definitely. And the 16 players that advance, that advance to the uh, cutoff, I would say have all background in the competitive, maybe not only Hearthstone, but also in a competitive background in other games. So, uh, as you said, no one is here by mistake. All right. Well, uh, it's time to find out who is going to advance from our first match. Remember, this is single elimination. Uh, so, from now on, it's not about Swiss rounds. This actually determines who's going to the playoffs to immediately get in the money and also get in the points. Uh, this has been em heavily emphasized by a player, RDU, uh, who keeps walking <laughs> around talking about how he feels like it's a little bit brutal to be in the round of 16 cutoff, but to go home with no points and no money. And yet, uh, he is our first featured player here up against Orange. What a clash of titans to start things off here. And it's uh, really hilarious because Ardu uh, would like to take revenge for the IEM that he lost to, uh, uh, to, uh, to right. Orange when, uh, to a 25% coin flip from Ragnaros. <laughs> That's right. I remember the Katowice event, and Ardu was uh, really zoned in back then, and he is zoning in now. Look at him going ham on that tablet, uh, <laughs> really making sure... <laughs> Channel I mean, channeling his inner life coach right there. Yeah, seriously, creating that inner palace or temple, whatever you want to call it. We're going to start things off with Paladin versus the Warrior. This is a tough matchup for the Paladin, generally speaking, but we've seen some ridiculous wins from Secret Paladin today. Mm -hmm. I feel like it might continue here if you can start off with a very good curve, but then again, Orange has some really good tools already. Death Spite being one of the most important pickups you can get. Yeah, well, he has Death Spite and uh, Protein Berserker of Baltish Order. All of those can um, answer different <laughs> situations uh, from. Uh, answer, answer, uh, can be an answer to different situations from uh, uh, Paladin. Because basically, you can just go on Cure, or if you need the Whirlwind effect as soon as possible, just go with Death Spite. So, very good draw from uh, Orange from the bad, from the beginning. But that is a curve for RDU. He hits the mini bot into the knife juggler, followed by muscle for battle. Even with a mix up of haunted creeper, um, depending on how the board is evaluated here. Do you like just putting out the mini bot here first, though, Ecop? Is it because it's the most power without overextending into fire war axe? Yeah, it doesn't overextend into fire war axe. It also uh, represents more damage. Um, you can follow it up with the haunted creeper, um, and then. The and then like the Master for Battle or Knife Juggler, depending on what you prefer. Goes Knife Juggler, yeah, this is, this is super uh, aggressive. This is a little bit YOLO, but uh, yeah, it's basically to check if there's a fireworks or not. If there is, then uh, sure, why not? I mean, he has the he has the next minion that is resilient to it, and if, it, uh, if there is no fireworks, then it's the coast wow. is clear for the um, Master for Battle. Yep, that's true. Yeah, it's the upside of uh, up the upside is plus two damage here because you get to play the knife juggler for one more damage and you get the juggle. So that two damage might end up being the difference maker. Yeah, and it translates to basically a, a one attack from the mini bot. So it's g practically it gained wind fury. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, just for that turn though, uh, you can just you can just. I guess uh, assume is there's a normal damage buff though, and and now the cool thing is to see how this Mustafer battle will hit. I, I was wondering Reporting if you should maybe duty. attack first with the mini bots to it. I think the oh Just you mean to not overkill. Well, you can oh, you can actually, preserve, you can actually preserve the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when when you will hit three times in a row, <laughs> not then bad. it doesn't really matter. So the scary thing is if it hits it once and nothing else. 
that's a pretty good outcome and really good pressure immediately. Now, Orange does have Death Spite. However, the t the pressure will continue to grow here because of Keeper of Ultimon will actually buff another minion again. Mm -hmm. well, uh, it oh, will, my oh my god. god. If that would be like one turn just later, yeah. like the, the Death Spite would just one turn later, None it make such a huge difference. Uh, I will lose some minions here. Now the question is if Orange will draw his Inner Rage. Because that will make a difference here. It will, but there's also reasonable pressure on the board that maybe he just dies. Like, in a couple of turns, just because he has two Consecrations in hand. And it's like, one of those things where maybe he doesn't have enough time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you basically had the perfect curve right there. It's uh, rare that's rare to see that uh, a mid-range Paladin is able to amount this amount of pressure against a Patron Warrior. Yeah, because normally the Patron Warrior has more time to stall, and even... Even time to armor up, but I feel like Orange just has no real chance to stabilize here. Well, this turn will be kind of slower, uh, but still the minibot is uncontested if RD will choose to go with the Consecration here. Consecration gives you the ability to play a two-mana minion, and then you can have the minibot survive. So that, that does sound pretty reasonable, considering that right now the Quartermaster has tempo... Doesn't feel the greatest. Yeah, but like double two drop um, is, 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 is fine too. Mm -hmm, of course, putting more pressure on board um, and still having an option to deal damage with just the consecration. Oh, that's interesting uh, because it shows us that he's planning on uh, going with the quartermaster next turn, but it might also tell Orange if he's paying attention to what was being held in the hand. Uh, for RDU, that uh, the potential cutouts, uh, there's only one card being uh, kept from the opening hand. It has to be something for l which is low, low cost, right? So he might read that there will be a quarter mass next turn. Or it could be something really expensive, right? But he kept that oh, during he kept the Morgan. Yeah, yeah. No, wait, wait, he didn't. Sorry, my bad. He no, he drew that like the first turn mm -hmm. of the game, yes. I think. But, you know, th this, the problem still exists that I think you don't have to worry too much. It's like, Regardless of whether or not he has Quartermaster, he, he just needs to stabilize here. So, choose to armor up instead, and that's where the Quartermaster is going to be s pretty effective if he can get an opportunity to play it. Yeah, Dr. Boom for an upcoming turn. Yeah, so you're definitely not going to want a Quartermaster over Boom. So, I think you just go for it immediately. That is six damage, and putting your opponent on already lethal on board might not even need Boom. Well, let's see what will be the answer from Orange. Does this woman change anything here? Oh, Battle Rage is now live, I guess, uh, with more on the line. So you attack first with the with the Pilot Shutter into Quartermaster. So Battle Rage for two. You want to get Inner Rages. You play Whirlwind after what? Afterwards, you weapon to kill off the two two and then execute the three three if you can draw it. It leaves you with 3 HP. <laughs> oh, scary. my gosh. Even that's against really Paladin. scary. Okay, so he's going to trade this immediately and then Battle Rage afterwards? Or is he going to play Boom? Oh, he might play Boom because he feels like he's safe. And, like, from what's on board, and he has to take a big risk to climb back in the game. Oh, my God. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you can't, you can't play around, oh, like, too many things without just giving up your chance to win, so I can understand. Dr. Boom is orange, is in his opinion, his best chance to immediately come back onto the board. Mm -hmm. But it was a very tough position, and you know what, man? This Pagan Warrior deck was supposed to take a win against Paladin, once again fails to do so, and it's not the, even the secrets. I, I mistakenly labeled it. It was the mid-range Paladin. To be fair, RDU's hand was pretty much insane. Yeah, and he went for the but but yeah, we with have that to idea. He went for the yeah, yeah he he went for the risky play and it paid off. He yeah. really went for the risky play because uh, I think everyone from here from the desk would play the mini bot first, right? Yeah, but even though we know that that there's speaking. no fear warx in the opening hand, so uh, RDU went for a really risky play and he got rewarded because that two damage that he got additionally did end up mattering. Yeah, this is sometimes what you have to do actually in order to win an unfavored matchup. Just go for the risky play, and if it pays off, then you're you're in the lead. Love it, love it. Well, looks like RDU is out to a quick 1-0 start. Orange, he has going to respond with his Hunter. Now, this is generally favored with the Hunter over the Paladin. 
Um, however, you know, if the the curve like we were talking about from Paladin is still one of the best answers to not only aggressive starts, but also making sure that the board stabilizes here. Particularly because you already see cards like Defender of Argus and even that Cog Hammer. That can really put a big halt into any aggressive starts from Hunter. Especially when uh, Orange's start is not ideal. He has the Lepernum though. Yeah, and that's at least some damage. RDU, not given the curve he did last game, and therefore it is less powerful. Do you want to put out the mini bot now? Or hero power instead. Just put, uh, put a 1 1 little trade with Coin the Coin hero on. power? Mm. I what? feel like, I mean, you still put the shitty mini bot and after you trade the 2 2 versus the 1 1. That can contest mad scientist and knife jungler. Uh, Do we know if Orange plays Glaive Zuka at all in this deck? No idea. Uh, I would assume so because he has. Hunter, yeah, with, does. with Arcane so Golem it has. Mini bot be. here is way better against a uh, play like Glaive Zuka, mm -hmm. for example. Or so you think, and then he freezing traps. <laughs> and it How just so happens. Drinking juice? It just so happened to work out. It's one of those really funny things. Like you feel like the hand might be awkward, but you know, all of a sudden, that mini bot can't do much. And zombie tower draws not bad. In fact, it's probably one of the better ones that you could ask for here from RDU. RDU did scout orange, and he knows that orange is playing uh, like only freezing traps. So. Um, he will probably not attack with the mini bot. Might uh, opt to attack with a zombie chow into that uh, freezing trap. Right? I don't think you want to risk the possibility of a weapon next turn to buff its durability, because he has to um, he has to pop the freezing trap as soon as possible, especially when you're playing mid range decks, Let which can be punished see. even more uh, by bouncing back a minion that costs more than two mana. So I think he should attack right now. Reporting for duty. Huh? Ends up passing though, and that means that Orange has free reign. He just wants the one one to contest the the leper gnome because like you if you have a weapon you have to kill off the one one. Do you have to? I mean you're playing a aggressive deck, so you can just ignore that and get just you know, hmm. go away, uh, deal additional damage with the weapon. Sure. I don't mind that. I don't mind going face, but I think that's kinda what RD wanted to encourage Orange to do. That's a huge amount of damage when you think about it. For free mana, you will get nine damage. That's almost w one third of uh, Paladin's health and overall in the game. Yeah, from just true. one card. And when you have the Arcan Golem and Kill Command available, oh, Ooh. Huffer boys, he's gonna go ahead and trade now, certainly to protect Huffer. Zombie Chow would have been better. Zombie Chow would have certainly been better. In I that mean, then scenario. it would be a Eagle home bow to kill the zombie charm most likely, so yeah. that would change the play by Orange. And now RD is stuck in a spot where I guess he just has to play out their Peacekeeper. The good news? Why not uh, Cockhammer? You gain Taunt, w you have already Divine Shield. Um, he's I uh, guess he's gonna go for the Peacekeeper here. You can you can get um, bigger targets, perhaps. What do you think, Ecup? With Peacekeeper? Yeah, as yeah, opposed to sure. Coghammer. No, 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 uh, with the Coghammer oh. instead. Oh, yeah, that that's that too. I mean, um, the, it, besides the Belcher and the Tyrion, there's no taunt. Although, how do you place Defend of Argus too, right? Yeah, so he does. So there's a couple taunts. But yeah, usually the Coghammer uh, would rather, rather buff a bigger minion. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, will there be enough time to do that? Let's see. Uh, the peacekeeper will probably trade with the uh, with the beast on board because that still leaves a minion out for trading the next turn, and you will have to gamble on the four damage from the piloted shredder because you probably mm. will have to develop your own, unless you just go with the piloted uh, with second peacekeeper, which mm. makes the renders the um, piloted shredder useless from orange. It does, and it gives him room to also develop zombie chow, but I think chow comes down here regardless. Okay, that's I also like this. Nice play. I think you you're very concerned about your health total. It is weak and susceptible to owl, but it's not very likely considering that most of these hybrid hunters run one at best. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially you usually want to have owl on on a better target like Tyrion or Sludge Belcher. Exactly. So with that in mind, he's baiting it out much earlier, and this is so painful for Marin Joe. Oh Seven my God. damage soaked. By just one minion that already soaked three damage. Oh! That's a good minion of the Shredder, though, Succubus. Yeah. That is a Divine Shield on that pilot Shredder, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. 
And but a Belcher! Um, a Belcher off the top. Down. That is huge. So if there will be no Leo from the Animal Companion, it will be hard to go through it. I mean, you will have to use the kill command on the, on that Belcher right now. That's right. That's a good draw. All right, well, we'll see what happens here off the Animal Companion, because if it's Huffer, that's still a very aggressive draw. It yeah, is Huffer. it is Huffer. Ooh. Oh, man, that's not good if you're looking at RDUs, because he has to take eight to the face now this turn. Does he? I think it like, might be the uh, Sacrobius into the slime, yes. then the weapon into the zombie chow. I would actually go with a Huffer into the slime, because um, this plays around Consecration better. Oh, ah, okay. Cool. Makes sense. You have so m you have damage in the hand too, but I guess this zombie chow killing it does invest more damage into the future turns. And you did kill a cock hammer and a sludge belcher, so it's the second sludge belcher that you're really worried about. Now. Seven, six, it's seven. It's kind of like he has another huffer in hand though, and he's got the he can play it all next turn. He chooses not to what? attack. God, this is really weird, especially when he has nine damage. Up uh, in the next turn. Also, if he draws another weapon, he can't swing with that either. It's really weird. Hmm. I wonder what he's thinking. Yeah, also, leaving the zombie tower on the board um, gives RDU a poten better, better potential defender of Argus, so I don't know. I, I think it would have been better to just kill it off. Yeah, Not very sure peculiar that. indeed. I think Orange was. Hmm. No, I, I don't. I don't understand why. Well, we'll ask him after the game. Well, uh, we take a look at the knife juggler here in the hand, and the the thing is, like, do you want a quick shot now so you can draw the card, but it's man efficient, but or do you want to try to maximize your hero power here? I think you should go for the minions and hero power instead, because uh, you know that you would like to get any every single point of damage right now. Yeah, the only time when it's actually good to uh, quick shot instead of hero power is if you like really need to finish the game as soon as possible and uh, because you're in danger of dying but uh, orange of course not in the slightest danger here mm -hmm. and uh, the possibility of just getting seven damage to the face now which helps lethal for next turn uh, it's very promising because you don't care about Tyrion being dropped one turn before usually he is the mana crystal basically renders it useless uh, but it gives a possibility of land hands yeah, that's true. The possibility of land hands would be really bad. Oh, heal Ooh, bar. Wow. That's nasty. Are you getting the exact card he was looking for right there? And that is a f that's a board clear as well. That is devastating. Now that I look at it. Yeah, but orange. he has to go for the minion. And if he orange was able to play the arcane golem, he'd actually be able to negate that effect right there. Mm -hmm. But he's been he's been playing around a lot of stuff here because he's been not really that aggressive. It's starting to pile up here but it's still a lot of damage piling on from from orange this is six nine eleven damage and he will draw a card it might be even another abusive sergeant oh, oh my god that's the dream. the dream oh my god he's gonna get punished and he's gonna lay on hands right now and it, that didn't look like it Keeper of Oldemon, so RDU, despite him drawing exact cards, things like Healbot, just gets aided down right back. And the quick shot into the quick shot. That's the dream. Into Kill Command or Lear Jenkins, right? <laughs> yeah. I would like to see that. Into the Core Rager finish. All right, well, Tyrion comes down. It's not going to stop him because there's still five damage that can just shoot over Tyrion's glorious beard. And uh, that's going to be game one over, or game two, excuse me, to Orange. Now oh, let's see. I'm really, uh, I would really like to see what is the next draw for Orange. If it would matter, if it wouldn't be a quick yeah. shot. Yeah. I think, I mean, Artie is trying to figure out if, how he can win this game, too. So he's really thinking about calculations of, like, yo, know, do I kill off this? Do I. Probably just go sacrifice phase? the 1 1 for Abyss of Surgeon and go phase with the mini bot. Uh, with the healbot, sorry. Yeah, most likely because you need to get that damage going. Mm -hmm. And on a creeper. So uh, I wonder if Orange can go for some BM. Nah. Nope. Are you not really happy about it? But you know what? It's it's a tough matchup, and Paladin already got the job done, right? Let's yeah, let's not let's not get too wild here. He still has uh, the warrior ultimately, which is really good against Orange remaining decks. Yeah, are you in a very good spot right now with the patron warrior still remaining? Um, 
favorite matchup against the hunter and is uh, against the paladin um the only yeah the best the best uh, deck that orange had against it is actually um his own patron warrior so a mirror match and that's out of the way already so are you definitely in a prime position to may potentially take this series at least uh, stats wise I well, it's a card game, so we'll anything see what can it happen. Of course, it's Hearthstone yep. after all. <laughs> That's Hearthstone. Nuance, precision. Well, I think if you look at Orange's lineup too, that Hunter is pretty powerful. Are you gonna go for the Druid? Because Druid, I think, against both the Hunter and Paladin, if you think about what it's better chance to win at, it's mm -hmm. probably this matchup. And Warrior is about the same in both, so I feel like maybe you can just go ahead and try to get the better matchup anyways for a higher chance of the success with the Druid. Okay, makes sense. Because if you beat the Hunter with Warrior, then you're almost guaranteeing yourself if you lose that matchup, then Druid hits the Paladin, so... Yeah. yeah. You'd yeah. rather have this matchup. Okay, <laughs> makes sense. Um, but uh, Orange has a powerful start of lapping up into Mad Scientist, the perfect cure for every single hunter especially with the uh freezing trap having so much value against druid yes uh the freezing trap is good although there is one card these days that freezing trap is not good against and that is the darnassus aspirin <laughs> uh you in general man it feels like the darnassus aspirin is really good against most secrets in terms of what it forces them to do and there it is aspirin on curve would you would you do anything else though? Instead, you do have up to four man, five mana to play with this turn. The problem, <laughs> I know. I would probably just go for the uh, Dread of the Claw in t uh, in taunt mode. Yeah, I was considering that. I was also considering maybe um, using Innervate to some capacity and like yes. either Wrath or Hero Power. The Esperant is so strong though. Like you play it and um, when when there is a scientist on the board and the, um, the threat of a freezing trap getting on the board, freezing uh, using the, uh, like popping the freezing trap with uh, Darnus's Esperant is the best thing you can do as Druid. Yes, they you get the complete ramp. It's a wild growth. Uh, with the upside of playing it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> there is definitely a huge threat, and I, I completely respect Orange's decision to kill command that. Ends up just wrathing and passing, and that is a good sign for Orange because now he can develop even more onto the board here. Are you saving that innovate uh, coin for the Dr. Boom? Yeah, that'll be his way and take it back into the game. He doesn't even have to um, innovate and coin, he can just innovate now. Yeah. But he, at, at the cost of up to, up to eight health or more. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like RDU will have to deal with his board first. Just too much damage coming in. But that, uh, but that Darnus Aspirin is another good draw. You can swipe and then coin Aspirin. And that is another thing to activate that Freezing Trap, just like you're mentioning, you got. The yeah. problem is he's already yeah. at 14. Exactly. There's no healing inside. And uh, the Druid of the Clutters might not be enough. Yeah. Ooh, that's a swing and a miss. This is, this is a blank for Orange. That's exactly what RDU wanted to see in this situation. Yeah, no ability to play high main, and that is this is sometimes Dr. what Boom. this is sometimes what happens that when you play hybrid hunter. Uh, I often encounter the same problem when you just have no not, no good plays on turn five before you want to play the high main. Mm -hmm. And now, mm, that's interesting because you can go for the unleash the hounds, clear the bombs, and play freezing trap to practically stop the boom in the tracks. But this, uh, if you go for your own seven hymen, you are sure that y he, y your opponent has to deal with seven hymen first. Oh! Wow! Wow! Jeez! Though that was an insane boom, bot. Yeah. Now a uh, swipe will be able to easily clean it up, and that's very big pressure from Doctor Boom to threaten to end the game. Three damage also to the face. Uh, not to mention that if. He draws Savage Roar. I think that's enough damage to kill his opponent because he'd be at 17 and the hero power is the 18th damage. So what do you think about playing Shadow of Next, Shad Shadow Next Armors and Darnassus here with the Innervate? M maybe Shredder. I was just thinking about both, you know. Oh wait, he has it 4 mana, right? Yeah. I can't see from here. So uh, I think you can uh, just Shredder here. It's fine. No Drew the Claw Charge. Or is he taunting up? He doesn't want to take any more damage. Okay. It's the safe play. It makes sense given that um, if you Savage Word, it's still lethal, like we were talking about. Mm hmm. 
Okay, and now Orange is in a, <laughs> in a pickle, because he has to use that Owl, but he can't use the Freezing Trap after that, so it's a really difficult position for Orange. What to do? Maybe so you go full nuts and play Knife Juggler and do Unleash the Hounds into Owl and just deal two damage to the face? That can't be right, because you don't get the hero power. It feels like you definitely need to hero power this turn because you're still going to be short in damage. And I think this is his out of like maybe having unleash, kill command, and owl of some combined force. But that force of nature will help immensely here. That's 4, yeah. 11, 15 damage. He is 2 damage off now, I think. Yes. 2 damage off even. Very close though. He's 2 damage off, but I think he might even just choose develop shade. Oh, wait, no, wait, can you play the Trian again? No, but he can't hero power if that's the case. Wow, no. I was thinking about, like, Trian just comes back and you play it, but you can't hero power, so he's, uh, he's one damage off. It he doesn't really matter. The health is more important than anything else because he you have a lot of outs next turn, and uh, Orange would have to clear both minions here. That's not possible. Not possible, especially with that hand. And that's going to wrap it up. So game three goes to RD. The Druid gets a very powerful win. I mean, it's one of those things where... Ardu might not have needed it, but you know the Druid can also sneak this win in and really help increase the odds that the Warrior takes this game and ultimately the series. So a job well done there by Ardu. Well played. Both players are, are, are really playing well, I think. And uh, Orange kind of startled just by the, by the Innervate, basically. Innervate and uh, the Dancer's Aspirant, which was bounced back. Uh, to his hand, allowing uh, Ardu to take in the in initiative with Dr. Boom before seven a high main. <laughs> we can, of course, <laughs> discard the um, the outcome of the first bomb that took <laughs> Ardu can't contain right. his excitement, man. He's trying not to <laughs> smile and hype himself, but he's just like... And every Orange five seconds, it's like, all right, this is pretty going pretty well. This is going pretty well. It's like, wait, no. <laughs> series is over. Stay cool. Stay calm. Think about the next game. Uh, and, and he keeps looking at Orange every so often. Orange getting his poker face on. RDU is going to try and close it out here with his Druid deck and loving this keep for the good curve into the Mysterious Challenger. That'll be Orange's key to destroying the Druid. Well, let's see if RDU hits that and very important Darnassus Ashford. That is a card so problematic to deal with on the Paladin side. Doesn't get it just yet. Still has two more draws to get it. Savage War, one of them. And it seems like he's gotten a swipe, so I guess he can innervate Shredder and really take initiative on the board. And you know what? That might even be just as good, because you might be able to race the Paladin and put a lot of pressure on them. Four damage per turn is something you can't really ignore. The Blessing of Kings for next turn uh, might change the situation again, but then yeah. uh, Adieu has the opening with the Keeper. Right. And another thing to get to consider is that he gives up his coins, so that's another turn slower on the Mysterious Challenger, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. which might ultimately be one of the big power turn swings that helps you win the game because, you know, you might be sparring here, like, you know, taking a little bit of damage there, taking a little bit of damage there, but then all of a sudden the Mysterious Challenger hits the board and then you start winning in two turns from that point on. Uh, by closing out that opportunity, you might be in This trouble. seems like the Keep best the possible draw. You build a board with a minion that is problematic for the druid. Oh, he went. He goes with the Pilot Shadow. I'm really surprised because that was the uh, possible opening to have a really good board. Bait out the swipe before. Well, actually, it was yeah. To horrible. be honest, though, yeah, it yeah, was, this was, was <laughs> very vulnerable to <laughs> swipe. Yeah, so, so Ardu did not want. Uh, I mean, Orange didn't want that. Yeah. When I when I was thinking that Fury had, that makes no sense to play the Keeper of the Ultimate trade. <laughs> I'll uh, buff my minion to trade into swipe and lose the board. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, um, yeah, probably not what you want to do. Just because the more minions you have on board that expands, the better your challenger gets. Um, not to mention that in the event where, say, like, something gets silenced or whatnot, Coghammer and Blessing of Kings needs to go on a better target that's spread out. So uh, he's going to silence this and most likely try and trade it. You want to keep as much of the board clear as possible. Okay. Was it actually the question is was it actually necessary to trade? Are, are the use line of uh, uh, accelerating out that uh, pilot uh, trader? Um, wanted to, uh, he wanted to uh, get into uh, the position of the aggressor, 
but um, by trading here, he just re uh, he just went uh, yeah he just went for a different game plan all of a sudden. I, I think it, it, it is a little weird because he has Savage Roar, right? Yeah, he has he has swipes as well, right? Like the, there's mm -hmm. two Savage Roar and uh, swipe, so um, even if the pilot trader has a favorable trade, you can still clear it with a with a swipe. I mean, it, it is interesting. I think he just really wanted to protect his other keeper of the grove because if he silenced and attacked, then it, the trader might kill the the two four. Yeah, but and then, then blessing of kings and kill the four three, hmm. or true silver maybe, or keeper Voldemort. I mean, he's got a lot of answers to potentially making that board really bad. So I think that's maybe what he could be investing in. But I do agree. I think if you're going to innovate to be really aggressive and you're given an aggressive hand, maybe you should follow up and you know hit the face. So I guess to follow up this turn is um, swipe to clear the board, still have two minions on board, and turn what? seven seems to be like a, a load up to seal a consecration turn. Yeah, I mean, here's a here's a very interesting thing about Lothab timing. It's like he's not going to be playing spells on six. He's going to be playing yeah. one minion and one minion only. But Lothab is your most powerful minion. And if he, in the event that he doesn't have Mysterious Challenger, you might just be able to bully with two Savage Roars or something equivalent to it. Rough stuff. And Ardu takes a swig, but uh, it's not going to change the fact that his, this turn has gotten much more complicated. Especially because of things like, you know, you can't just Wrath immediately and stuff because Redemption and... You're going to be losing some attacks from the Noble Sacrifice. Well, you don't want to trigger the Redemption on... On the Belcher, that's for sure. Right. Neither of these targets you want to trigger redemption on. Hmm. And by the way, Orange has a follow up play on turn seven. Yep. Uh, so that's very a classic turn seven play with Dr. Boom. That seems to be a very bad position for RDU. Even though he drew, he can hmm. trade with Savage Roar. Okay. Savage Roar, he trades, he gets the event on the 6-6, six, six, and he's allowed to use Wrath on the Belcher and trade. That's assuming the Belcher doesn't get uh, Avenge buffed. Let's see. It does. No! Awkward. So he swipes this instead. And then... Attack some damage to his face, right? And then kill off the one two. Okay. That was... That was as good as of a clear yeah. as how you could get. That 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 was like not surprisingly not too bad, but not too bad, but still. The worst is yet to come, my friend. <laughs> and that's gonna be a huge board for Orange once the Doctor Boom hits it. When you think about it, there's Keeper of Old Man and uh, and Cockhammer to just follow it up, which will be a problematic for Druid, every single Druid in the game. So, that's would you cool. uh? Nah, I was like, Doctor Boom just too good, maybe. I was like, would you consider just using Coghammer for an easy trade? Yeah, looks like he does it. I mean, he wants to trade the minion. Uh, Orange right now, by far, like, he's so far ahead in terms of card advantage, completely outvaluing RDU right now. And um, the only way he can lose is like, if he just chooses to ignore the minion. Yeah, I feel like that could be it. Maybe he's playing around some innervate combo shenanigans if he just went really aggressive. Um, so the cog hammer here sets up even more power than if it was just Dr. Boom by himself. Um, so, I, you know, I don't, I don't really mind it. It's still a big threat to Druid. And that's it. So game four is in the books. We're going to game five here. That's what RDU was planning from the beginning. He got the important Druid versus Hunter win. And now just has to rely on a pretty good matchup, I think. Pretty good matchup, but as we know, as we know, just secret paladin can cure out, play mysterious challenger, followed up with six, seven, eight. I'm, I mean, game. this is the thing we learned from this tournament. If there is a deck that can pretty much go undefeated against everything, it's secret paladin. We've seen Hoy with his incredible run uh, with his secret paladin get it going undefeated with his, with the deck. It's yeah, and completely insane. It's it's performed very well, and even RDU understands that, considering that. 
In his previous series against Gar for the deciding match going to round 16, he was up 2-0 and he almost got reverse swept by Secret Paladin from Gara. So yep, that was very close. Really intense stuff. That is a turn one zombie chow followed by a turn two knife yuggler. <laughs> and if you have the fiery war axe, you have the response. There's not few war no axe yet, war but there's axe. one chance to draw it. There's two. I mean, chow, with a chow on board, you can take your time, right? It's a secret keeper that's always the big threat that you want yeah. to remove it immediately. Because chow, even if you hit this turn and you fire war axe on two, you only took four damage. So. Seems like an unstable goal point to you this turn, right? No, it's almost good. So he can slam and and Amazing. use the armor smith effectively for three damage. Okay, makes total sense. Cog Probably change his mind when we we'll see the knife juggler and slam just the knife juggler. It is possible. Uh, he's obviously looking for a weapon though first, and the weapon is going to be crucial because you don't want to only answer the first threat. But if he plays pilot shredder and things going on forward, interesting. What will? What will Orin do? I like this. This is an attack around Cool Taskmaster, and it's a card that often punishes more than you'd think. Yeah, also, there's not really a point in attacking the face right there because Zombie Chow will eventually heal up anyway. Mm -hmm. So it just allows him to make better trades with the Coke Hammer on turn 3. Because then he's allowed just to use the Coke Hammer on the minion if something goes really badly. Are you right. most likely you will see the slam because the juggler can be a big threat. It just feels like you take too much excessive damage, and there's anything we've learned is that if the patron warrior takes too much damage early, I mean he was the one putting it out from the paladin side to the warrior, so he understands this perfectly. And the cock hammer is the only play here for orange, which makes the zombie job effectively a mini bot for taunt, and that's always problematic for yeah. the warrior. Yeah, Warrior not even had enough health to, <laughs> to really, you know, monetize this battle rage for drawing some value cards here. Yeah, the Acolyte of Pain though, right now is going to be really good. There was, there's no way for Orange right now to um, clear it in one shot. So Ardu will guarantee himself two cards off of it. Getting himself well, actually, Orange will guarantee it. <laughs> That's Orange. interesting. Yeah, he doesn't allow um, Ardu to get damage on. His um, character for the battle rage. Ah, I like it. I like it. Denying battle rage value, which happens to be in Ardu's hand, not once, but twice. twice. And two back to back battle rages on a damaged acolyte is oh. an easy ticket to the full. Now, the there's full only pack. one card missing for Orange's hand to make this game really one sided, I would say. Yes. We'll, we'll see, though. This, this Tyrion is the main. The main, um, yeah, the main card you need to uh, actually have a viable chance in this matchup. The mysterious challenger sometimes is not enough because there's just an easy way to clear it for the patron warrior with execute. Mm -hmm. But the Tyrion, if you kill it, you get an Ashbringer, and that uh, represents a lot of damage. All right, well, Frothing Berserker here to try to challenge a little bit of the board hidden behind the unstable goal. Now it's time for the mysterious challenger, and. You have to wonder to yourself, do you want to deal with this unstable goal before or afterwards? Because the more minions you have, the better it is for Mysterious Challenger, but you do recognize the whirlwind effect is pretty problematic. So what do you think about ki uh, Blessing of Kings instead of the uh, Mysterious Challenger this turn? I mean, it makes it very problematic for RDU to deal with it because he will have to use the execute on a target he doesn't really want to execute. But at the same time, developing the board with Mysterious Challenger and just decreasing the odds of drawing secrets next turns is very important. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to draw those secrets. Uh, you want um, your deck as thin as possible so you can get those bigger bombs like Dr. Boom that uh, we actually, that Orange really desperately needs on turn seven. Mm -hmm. So he goes for the Mysterious Challenger and doesn't draw the second Noble Sacrifice from his deck. And now let's see, what are the options? Uh, he is able to execute uh, the Oh, like, ooh, wait. this is actually not a bad spot at all, because um, you are able to land the Avenge on the 6-6 six, six, no matter what, right? If I'm not mistaken, I because of the death, so. ref death Rattle triggers. Oh, actually, he can use the Inner Rage 
no. right? Oh. Well, uh. if, if you do it, the redemption activates on the haunted creeper. Yeah, that's not something you want to do. But it actually goes for it. But I think you get the avenge guaranteed onto the six six, and I don't think you mind a couple of one ones because what's going to be sweet is Frothy Berserker hitting the face for like Million. fourteen, fifteen, <laughs> maybe even more. Oh, it actually lands on the four three. Oh wait, wait, what? Oh, the the haunted creeper was played before the secret. Therefore, the Haunted Creeper Death Battle activates first, and then Avenge checks for a minion. But and that's now, okay, too? Dude, I don't know, man. And now it makes really um, uh, really weird for the uh, attack with Death Spell because the... Oh. No, 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 no. This is good. He's gonna, good. he's gonna hit for uh, a butt ton of damage. Ready? And all and all that Orange has left is two Spiderlings. Yeah, prepare your aim, his Secret Paladin. Oh, my goodness. But is his blade be thirsty? Dude, that is a lot difference. of damage! Are you kidding 16. me? Boom! And that is like almost to the point where he just gets Gromash and moment, he's just gonna wreck him. For a moment there, I thought there was there was eye for an eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been so sick. <laughs> Peacekeeper. That would have been so sick. And then you um, you have the Blessed of King's Consecration right back. <laughs> I mean, it didn't matter if he had uh, Peacekeeper. It, it only matters the difference between keeping that 2-2 two, 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 two or uh, losing it. All right, well, can Orange outrace RDU here? Because RDU has weapons and patrons and other shenanigans here. Yeah, but RDU cannot kill him, kill Orange right now, and there is a Tyrion coming up, so that's going to be a big roadblock for RDU. Yeah, that that's huge. Monumental, in fact. Because that Tyrion will be able to uh, punch Orange tickets to the round of eight if he can continue to ride that momentum. Muscle battles. Muscle for battles not really good. Here it is. Let's watch RDU's face here. Watch his eyebrows clam together. No, oh, it's so painful. The Tyrion. Oh, no reaction. <laughs> he does have the execute after all. Yeah, I guess so. So he feels like, um, and he can also dig a little bit. Like he can get whirlwind off of the battle yeah. rage. He will get one card from the acolyte of pain because I think Orange needs to kill that acolyte, right? Yeah. Here's the problem. He has okay. two threats he wants to kill. This is so painful. What about? He needs to. He, he cannot afford to attack. Uh, to to proc the death rattle by attacking. So he can proc it through the fiery war axe. Yeah. Then fiery war axe allows him to battle rage for three cards if he drops armor smith and, and armor up. So armor smith and battle rage, and then you can draw three. You can then tag acolyte into the. Tyrion and then execute it huh. and then attack face for three if you want to execute the Tyrion you could just as well execute the buffed spider yeah, because the buffed spider is you don't want to your opponent the uh, Ashbringer yeah. yet yeah, very yeah, good yeah. point let's see what he draws first and he gets another whirlwind which is really powerful if he wants to just get more health right be and more cards right before he executes oh, oh and he gets wow that's, that's very important. so big and a great observation, Yikop. He chooses actually to isolate Tyrion to buy himself just a little bit more time. And, you know, that Consecration doesn't exactly help clear it either. I don't know if this was actually the correct play, though, because considering that uh, he got the Taunter, he was kind of safe from the big minion and the Ashbringer because one of, the, one of them has to run into the Taunter. And, uh, yeah, the, I mean, now, yeah, without now the Taunt, he, he, he had the opportunity to, like, attack into uh, Orange's face with... Uh, uh, with the fire with weapon, at least. Yeah. you're right, and you never know too, because it might even give him more armor. Another card that could get Gromosh as well, which ultimately could be the ticket to win, because he wants to hit him twice with it. I mean, it's, it's very hard to say, but this life gain is also not a relevant. There's a too. Gromosh. Doesn't it make a difference now. It. I'm thinking. I don't think so. Because he doesn't <laughs> have the ability for Gromosh hit face. Or does he? Reporting for duty. That's not wait, 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 wait. Both executes are gone. Wait, 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 wait. He can, uh, can he, can he attack with the armor smith? Play, attack with the weapon. Play Gromash, whirlwind twice, and hit for lethal. But that's nine mana. Oh, it's t oh I thought he had <laughs> ten mana. Oh my god, that was that, that would have been, been crazy. Because so he would have lived by one HP. Because yeah. he, he gets that one armor. <laughs> oh my god. I think so you might just have to run Tyrion in then, right? You just 
or so you run uh, Gromash, Gromash and into that, then uh, attack with Armor Smith and into. And then Whirlwind. Oh, yes. that's still j oh, that's still pretty good. Wait, you want to Armor Smith? What? Okay. Oh, okay, never mind. So he's he's doing it uh, after the fact. It's, I think it's about the same. Um, except this time he preserves, I think, one extra health by doing this. Because I thought you were going to bump Gromash first, and then the armor smith, and mm -hmm. then Whirlwind, but I think this gains one more life this way. But this finishes up the game if RD will not get a taunt next turn. Yeah, or Or she's blocked. Belcher. Guys, this, I mean, this oh is my tense. Goodness. This is elimination game, and it's coming down once again to like the final draws here. The Ashbringer is just threatening to kill RDU here. In, In a rage? rage? Does it change anything? It allows him to... If he picks up Slam, I think that actually is it. No, you're trolling so hard right now. Oh my god, no mission Venner to no mission Venner. Is this it? Is this RDU's chance of winning slipping away? Uh, okay, so... He can still no mission Venture into like an armor smith? And then that might help him survive? Against uh, an Ashbringer and the Shredder? I don't know. That's that's really hard that's to really say. Maybe, is this final chance maybe Pilot Shredder related? No, it's a Grim Patron! I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Uh, uh, there's, I don't think there's a way for him to get out of this mess. Because even if the Shredder drew something really ridiculous, he'd still be dead. And I think RDU is trying to calculate the last chances, but that means Orange, once again, is going to be able to take RDU out in a pretty big tournament for points and a lot. And look at this. He's going to be able to swing for three, but put us down to one. Wow. So oh. close. <laughs> oh, my God. One damage. There's no way. Evil. You can't script that. Oh my god. This was an intense series and oh my, oh my god. it came down to the wire. <laughs> One damage. What a game. What a match. It's like if if any ability to like like cuz already spent all of his mana too so you could argue he didn't swing with a weapon like and move in for the but there's so many small moves of like how things end up panning out but that was a, that was a brilliant series man. I love I love that. Ardu just devastated. I, I think he Orange can't even process it too, man. Yeah. It was so stressful. He is just like, God, that was intense. Just remember a couple of games back when Ardu was like smiling. He probably already saw the victory in his grasp, and then Circuit Paladin just took it away. Yeah. Twice in a row, man. Look at the emotion on those two players. Th those are two of the most emotional players in Hearth in Hearthstone. They, they really pour their heart and soul into the game. So, yeah. yeah, definitely a great series to watch for sure. Yeah, and uh, another one that stings especially deep because uh, this one means that RDU goes home with no points yeah. and no money. Despite having a 6-2 and two record, or sorry, a 7-2 seven and, two seven record, and two record yeah. leading into it. So he ends the tournament at 70% win rate, and it's still not good enough. Yeah. It's... This it's brutal, man. This is some this is some <laughs> really intense rivalry between RDU and Orange. I mean, it dates back to IEM Katowice, where mm -hmm. uh, Orange took RDU's chances of actually getting um, the tournament win. I, I actually picked RDU to be the favorite at that one, and Orange just, yeah, Ragnaros him away. Yeah. <laughs> and now, now again, just crushing RDU's dreams of even getting anything yeah. out of this tournament. I'm particularly sad because you know he's in my team. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm just sitting here awkwardly, wow. not talking. <laughs> that was uh, that was a pretty hard one to stomach at the very end when you see the motions of just uh, running through everything. But congratulations, Orange. He moves on to the round of eight uh, tomorrow, and so he is done today, and he can rest easy knowing he's got some points and some money. In the meantime, we're gonna jump to our next.